For more advanced stuff, there's the meta keyword. So if we do u property, and then we say meta is equal to, then open parentheses, we can say there are a lot of options here, but we could do, for example, display name. We'll set that equal to my custom display name. And then we'll create a variable, give it a name, compile. Now notice the name is this huge edit anywhere, blueprint read write custom display name property. But if we go to the engine, we'll say my custom, make sure we select the actor. You can see my custom display name is a variable. What the display name does is let you rename variables that are exposed to the designers in the engine, but give code a more readable name for engineering purposes. There's many other meta specifiers too. For example, if we paste this variable in, you can see this clamp min and clamp max. This will keep the value between these two values. And so we have meta equals clamp min equals one, and clamp max equals 100. Save that, compile it. Now you can see that we have a the variable, we can edit its value, but we can't take it into the range that it's clamped in. So if I try to go into a negative value, so negative 50, it actually gets clamped to one. And if we go above our range of 100, say 500, it gets clamped down to 100. There is another one, which is the UI min and UI max meta specifiers. For these, this is just a hint that the UI should take you between those two values, but you can actually take it without a clamp. So if we build that, if we look at the UI clamped and try to go to negative 50, it actually works, and 500 also works. But if we set it to five, and we try to drag the value down, it only goes down to one. If we try to drag the value up, it only goes to 100. So the UI kind of gives us this soft clamp, but if you need to override the actual value, you still have that ability. There is also categories that you can put variables in. Categories are not part of the meta specifier. So you can see here we have meta with the UI min and max clamps. But outside of the meta, we have this category equals test group. So if we compile that, if we write the test group category, so just writing test group, we can get everything that's in that category. So we get the categorized property. U properties also protect you from having your memory garbage collected. The raw property is enough. So this object, if we were to populate it with something other than null pointer, would not be garbage collected. Though you should be very careful because if you just do a raw pointer, if you fill this in with some data, the garbage collector won't know that it needs to protect it from being deleted and it would have deleted it. And additionally, it will not set it back to null pointer, so you'll have bad memory. You should check out my video on the garbage collector and perhaps the most common way that you crash the engine by being not careful with properties. Also note that there are a lot of keywords for U properties. A lot of them are defined in this object macros.h file so that you can read comments as to what they do. So if, for example, the edit instance only says so indicates that this property can be edited by property windows, but only on instances, not on archetypes. And so you can scroll through here and have some cool stuff. But everything isn't necessarily in this one little section. So another great feature is to use intran. And if you use intran, you just type u property. And you can get a ton of examples just from searching it. You can search for things like meta equals. You get lots of examples, and there's some pretty advanced stuff in here. So it's worth taking a look and seeing what you can do. This is why I enjoy engines like Unreal and Godot that let you have the entire engine's source code when working on your projects. We will continue exploring the basics of view properties in a follow-up video.